The growing coronavirus outbreak is causing chaos in global financial markets. It's freezing supply chains. It's causing companies all over the world to create work from home plans and ban business travel. In late January 2020, Chinese scientists in Shanghai released the fully sequenced genome of the novel coronavirus that was wreaking havoc in Hubei province. That kicked off the race at drug companies and government labs to develop a cure for coronavirus, or at least its symptoms. In terms of vaccines, the U.S. has moved at a pace we have never seen before. Still, it's going to be at least a year to a year and a half until they have a vaccine broadly available to deploy. First off, the coronavirus we're hearing about on a 24-7 basis these days belongs to a larger family of coronaviruses. That family of viruses includes the one that caused the SARS outbreak in 2002 and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome to spring up in 2012. The official name of the new coronavirus is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2. The one discovered in December 2019 in Wuhan, China, causes a disease that scientists decided to call COVID-19. This naming convention works the same way with HIV and AIDS. So HIV is the virus that causes AIDS the disease. Symptoms of COVID-19 include fever, fatigue, and coughing. Some people become infected but don't develop any symptoms. Most people, around 80%, recover without any special treatment. About one in six people with the disease end up developing a serious illness. Older people and those with underlying medical conditions are most likely to come down with serious issues. The disease travels through small droplets that spread when people cough or sneeze. Those droplets land on objects, people touch those objects, and then touch their eyes, nose, or mouth. That's how people catch the new coronavirus. And there's no vaccine to prevent them from getting it. There's no vaccine for any of the coronaviruses, for that matter. Here's why. Vaccines have become a big market for drug companies. Scientists and researchers no longer give them away like they used to with the polio vaccine. Vaccines have become a $35 billion market. There's strong and steady demand for vaccines against established diseases like polio, measles, and hepatitis. Creating vaccines for emergency pandemics becomes tricky. Unfortunately, developing vaccines and medicines for these kinds of emergency outbreak situations is not good business. We've seen that over history. Uh, in Ebola, companies haven't necessarily been rewarded for developing vaccines and uh, treatments there, at least not by Wall Street. Uh, in Zika, we haven't seen anything. Uh, in SARS, which happened back at the beginning of the turn of the century, we still don't have anything. This is not a business model that appeals to investors uh, in the drug industry because these are not large chronic disease drugs that bring in a lot of money. They're used hopefully for a short period of time uh, to address a problem that then we hope to be able to move past. So it's not a big money maker for the industry. And they're very hard to predict. Flu vaccines, for example, are grown in chicken eggs. Yes, your flu shot comes from chicken eggs, a lot of them. That's been the process for the last 70 years or so. This process takes a long time, and it's not as reliable as newer methods, like incubating vaccines in cells as opposed to eggs. More than 100 national influenza centers in more than 100 countries monitor the flu throughout the year and make recommendations on how to create that season's flu vaccines. Government agencies like the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, called BARDA for short, are pushing to modernize the way the U.S. produces emergency vaccines like the flu shot. BARDA's giving grants worth hundreds of millions of dollars to companies like Sanofi, which uses recombinant DNA, not chicken eggs, to produce flu vaccines. One of its main jobs is to help create a market for drug companies to develop emergency vaccines through the use of its grants. In late January 2020, HSS Secretary Alex Azar declared an emergency in response to the coronavirus outbreak. As part of that, BARDA announced it was expanding established partnerships with Sanofi and Johnson & Johnson to help develop vaccines for the coronavirus. There's an international group pouring money into the vaccine race, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. It's backed by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as the governments of Germany, Japan, and Norway it's a relative newcomer to the global vaccine community. It was created in 2017 to help speed up the process of developing new vaccines. So far, it's invested about $23.7 million in the push to develop a coronavirus vaccine. It plans to invest a total of $100 million in order to get vaccine candidates to early stage clinical trials. 
The Oslo-based Global Coalition says it needs about $2 billion more in additional funding to fully develop viable vaccines against the coronavirus. Most of the biotech companies working on vaccines or treatments already had a head start by previously working on SARS and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which are part of the coronavirus family. Biotech firm Moderna has one of the most promising starts so far. It's using a new technique called messenger RNA, or mRNA, to develop its vaccine candidate. The drug maker has already started to deliver its vaccine to national health officials. The vaccine was co-designed with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases after Chinese scientists decoded the coronavirus's genetic sequence in January 2020. Moderna set a record within the drug industry for the speed at which it developed its vaccine candidate. Using its mRNA method, it took Moderna about 42 days after the coronavirus's genome was sequenced. For comparison, it took about 20 months to develop a vaccine to the human testing phase during the SARS outbreak in 2002. Moderna plans to start a small-scale human trial of the vaccine soon in Seattle, Washington, an epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in the United States. It will take about three months or more to show that it is safe. And then if you show that it's safe, you've got to put it into what's called a phase two trial to show that it works. And the reason is there's a medical, ethical, and other considerations is that we'd be giving this to normal people to prevent infection. So you must be sure the, 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 the edict of medicine, first do no harm. So we need to make sure it's safe and we make needs to make sure it works. That entire process will take at least a year and a year and a half. Johnson & Johnson is also in the race. The company is working with BARDA on a potential treatment, but it's also developing a vaccine using a deactivated version of the coronavirus. As mentioned earlier, Sanofi is also working with BARDA on a coronavirus vaccine. It plans to have a vaccine candidate to test in a lab within six months and on people within a year to 18 months but approval could be as long as three years away. Inovio Pharmaceuticals partnered with a Chinese company called Beijing Advaisin Biotechnology to speed up the development of its DNA vaccine. It received an initial grant of $9 million from the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. Inovio is using the same method for the coronavirus vaccine as it did with its DNA vaccine against Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Currently, there haven't been any DNA vaccines approved for use on humans. Doctors and global health experts have tried to temper vaccine expectations, saying that even though this stage has gone quickly, reviewing test results and getting a vaccine deployed to the public could take many more months or even years. A year to 18 months would still be the fastest we've ever seen a vaccine get developed. And the way that breaks down right now for the lead program uh, is that it is starting phase one clinical trials in people now. It'll take about three to four months, they say, to determine the safety of the vaccine. Then they're going to move into phase two, which will involve a lot more people. Uh, and remember, these are healthy people that they're giving the vaccine to to see if it can prevent disease. So the risk tolerance is low, uh, lower than if people were already sick and you're giving them a treatment. So that's why you have to be so careful here. They say it could take perhaps eight months to get through phase two. And so that's how you're getting out to about a year before you even know if you have something that's safe and that works to protect people. Other drug companies are hurrying to develop various treatments for the coronavirus, and they could come much sooner than vaccines. The most promising, according to the World Health Organization, is Gilead and its drug remdesivir. That drug is already being tested at the epicenter of the outbreak in Wuhan, China, and Gilead is now expanding to other countries, including the United States, on a compassionate use basis. We should know within a period of a few months, several months, whether or not this particular drug works. If it does, the implementation of that would be almost immediate. The pressure to develop a coronavirus vaccine grows each day as the number of infected people rises and the death toll climbs even higher. But there's a real risk to pushing too hard and too fast. Some drug companies plan to push testing schedules into human trials rather than spending months testing the vaccines on animals in labs. 
That could lead to what's called immune enhancement, where a person or animal who receives a vaccine ends up with a more serious disease than unvaccinated subjects. According to Reuters, leading health and drug company officials recently advocated for fast-tracking human testing of coronavirus vaccines during a closed-door meeting convened by the World Health Organization. The question facing health officials, is accelerating testing schedules worth these kinds of risks? That all depends on whether countries like the United States can contain the fast-spreading novel coronavirus.